stuff has fallen, and the prognosticators say still three to five more to come tonight in Chicago as we welcome you to football under the lights at Snowy Soldier Field. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. now on first down and he'll go down the Bears get there for the sack a bad start there a big loss on their first play from scrimmage it's second down it may be cliche but it is something that holds up over time doesn't it if you're the visitors you don't want to let the crowd in the game early yeah and that's exactly what they did there but you said also this defense they're going to give them a lot of looks like we just saw there aren't they they certainly are they're a proud unit and they're going to ride the momentum of this crowd with them and that's why they got after them early and nearly an interception here on their opening drive but instead third down well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, here's Green Bay's third-year punter, J.K. Scott. DeAndre Carter back deep. Let's take it inside his own 40. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Bears take over. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Foles going to lead the Bears to the line. First and 10 at their own 44. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. A second and 10 on a chilly, snowy December day, and I must say, I'm loving it. Kind of putting me in the holiday spirit. Charles, Charles hates it. He's giving me the evil eye, folks. And he finds his tight end, Graham. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. And Jimmy Graham, of course, a guy who's been around a while. Been with New Orleans, Seattle, and most recently with Aaron Rodgers and these Green Bay Packers the last two seasons. Had 93 catches in a Packer uniform and went over 1,000 yards combined in those two years as well. And now Miller hit, and he fumbles. And this is going to be Packer football. You know I love football. You know I love the game. I hope so. But nighttime in December, you know I'm wearing multiple coats. <laughs> so I just wonder about the guys on the field with all the great gear that they have. Do they have enough on or do they have too much on? Because sometimes that can affect you trying to carry the ball. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. And now after the delay of game, they're operating behind the stick, second and 15. Foles. Incomplete. Foles pass. Incomplete on the throwaway. He was covered by Jair Alexander. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Foles. 
And that is incomplete. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. Have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started, they had six points that they were thinking about. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Back deep is Tavon Austin. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? A run on first down, but it's not going to get them much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. I think that's the type of run we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. At the 13-yard line. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On third and long, it's Rodgers. And able to find Alan Lazard. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Rodgers teaming up with Lazard there for a Packer first down. First down. Jones. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Shotgun now for Rodgers. He gets this to Devontae Adams. Rogers. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Good job, good job. It's a big play, yet amazingly, because of how far they had to go, they're still looking at a second down here. Yard line. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. The ball carrier. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Brought down by Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Now a first down carry by Jones. And that play goes nowhere. He's met behind the line, and a penalty flag may add insult to injury. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Man open, that's Marquez Valdez-Scantling. He's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. yard line. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. 
Looking to throw again on second down. Rodgers. They'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Gets this to his running back, Aaron Jones. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Give him 18 on that play, and Green Bay has the first as well. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. On first down, Jones. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. And I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Looking to throw on second down. Rodgers, a dump underneath to Jones. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for offense. Brings up fourth down, solid coverage by the Bears' D. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Crosby on for the field goal. A 37-yard attempt. And it's a fake. He's going to throw it. That is caught at the seven. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. So they pulled a little rabbit out of their hat nearly for six. Almost got the fake into the end zone. Either way, they're set up really nicely. So we all fell for the illusion, didn't we? Did they saw someone in half on stage? Well played. I mean, that was something right there. We felt and he'll take this one in for a Packer touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Packers have taken the early lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. Now, these are not going to be easy on a cold, snowy night, but this one is up and through. Makes the score. Packers 7. Bears nothing. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. And 
And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Rashawn Gary, give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. Another try after the first down sack. Foles. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. One of the selling points at the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Now Foles, going to let one fly for Robinson and unable to connect, incomplete. Uh, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone, and there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. Call it an even 40-yard punt, 7-0 on the return. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. The Packers offense set to go. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Rodgers now on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Intended for Had no command that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw again, Rodgers. Got an open man, it's Valdez Scantling. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Give them 14 on that one, and a first down. Working from the gun, Rodgers. And he's taken down inside the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. A gain of 12. First down, Packers. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. Aaron Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 26. A three-yard pickup. Brings up second and seven. After one, seven nothing. On EA Sports. Packers seven. Bears nothing. Balled it to 26, second and seven. Now it's Rodgers. He sets up the screen to Jones. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Given three on the screen, he couldn't break free, and it's third down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, Everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back.
back at the 32. It's Khalil Mack that time shooting in there to get him to the ground. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. And that'll be off the crossbar and out. It's short. He couldn't get it there. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was a crossbar that said otherwise. And that'll deny him a shot at three. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They're going to start to drive here on the ground with Patterson. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Smith on the tackle. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Here's David Montgomery, second-year man from Iowa State. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. The ball carrier. Back-to-back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. The Packers bringing in an extra member of the secondary here to try for the third down stop. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. So this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time spark somewhere. But it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And there's a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven-yard line. Jamal Williams. Hakeem Hicks that time on the tackle. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to punt the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. Second and five now. Rodgers, he'll get this to Lazard. And able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him in a more conventional way and is much more successful as well. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. Caught on the right side by Jones. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. The Packers on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and two. Throwing is Rodgers. And that's going to be incomplete. Rogers, the coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Here's J.K. Scott now as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Oh, look at the juke. 
And that'll be a return of 12 following a very nice punt. The Chicago offense set to get started. But it hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. 35 yard line. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Foles on the give to Montgomery. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. On third down, he'll drop to throw. That's caught by Montgomery. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. First and ten. That was just a good example of taking what the defense gave him. No one opened downfield, knew where his safety valve was, swung it out to him. He gets upfield and picks up the first down. Well done all the way around. They'll look to throw here on first down. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Foles on target with that one to Graham. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Foles on target there to Robinson. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And the red zone precision is the watchword. If the throw's a little too early, too late, maybe off a little bit, there'll be a good chance that any attempt is going to be a contested one, and that one falls incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. His pass caught at the four. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like we... Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Snags it for the pick, and they'll have the football but deep in their own territory as he's brought down at the five. Over first and ten at their own five-yard line. So after the INT, it's Rodgers. That's complete to Lazard. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. Three yards the game there, second down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. 
Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Packers on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This time they face a third and two. He's got the hook up to Lazard. And he's going to have a Packers first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. It's a gain of three. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. They'll run on first down. Jones. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 13. It's a first down. First down, Packers. Let's go, baby. Let's go. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, it's Rodgers. This is Lazard with a catch out left. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. On first down, Rodgers. To Valdez Scantling over the middle. Rogers. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. It's a game one of the seven. feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Rogers. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. And this is going to be incomplete. They sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. Here's J.K. Scott now as he's on to punt for Green Bay. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. The Bears take over. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure and to come away with nothing. That's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah. Will they make up? Packer pressure, and down he goes. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play <laughs> -play guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me.
On third down, they go Montgomery. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Austin. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And the Packers will have a short field to work with here as they take over first and 10. now on first down setting up the screen here Aaron Jones now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter and Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field so less than 30 seconds to go in the half pretty good starting field position all things considered you'd think they definitely have time to get in a field goal range yes and you get into the huddle or you come off the bench here and you've called multiple plays because you're going to say this is how we're going to run them in order guys you don't have time for audibles you don't have time to change anything you're trying to get the ball in position to at least get three they've got a great shot to do it right here oh the rookie nearly had the pick probably should have had him third down now he certainly had a good game throwing the ball so far but i think he was trying to take that from good to great with that throw trying to get one downfield an incomplete pass on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down from midfield here's rogers He's got Adams on the hookup. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And that hits the right upright and caroms away. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So plenty of leg, but it's the accuracy there that lets him down. Yeah, he hit it really well. I think this might have been good from 55. But you'll see it just conked off that upright. And they're denied a chance at three points. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the problem. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off at the 24. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So here's the Bears' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. Uh, last time was a pretty one play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. <laughs> see what happens. Man, I just love being in this stadium. So much history, tradition, so many great teams and games. And we're seeing a pretty good one right now. Hotly contested in the third quarter. Seven yards, the pick up there. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive there. He hits the reliable target. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Patterson on the draw play. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Put formation, put formation. Come on, boys, come on. 
Now Foles. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Here's Foles. And they'll go back to Robinson. This time he's got him. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 40. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. Here's Foles throwing complete to Miller. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They'll contain him to just four, second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and try to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Following the penalty, Montgomery. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Definitely too early to panic, but that is his fourth carry of the game, and collectively has a total 10 yards. So maybe there's no panic, but maybe some concern. Yeah, and maybe a little concern up front because they're not giving him any space right now. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. A play fake to Montgomery, now Foles. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked off around the 41. And his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at the 45. He'll set up to throw from the gun. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. The 20. And they will score a pick six for a Bears touchdown. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. That ties the game at seven. Seven now as they kick it away. Fielded right around the eight. 
And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. This is Jones. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Rodgers to throw on third and one. That's complete right side to Lazard. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Throwing again. Rodgers. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Roger. He'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. He'll get this to Lazard. And he'll get this up near midfield, but that's still a few yards shy of the first down. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Foles. That's complete to Mooney. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. 
And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. They'll try and get the running game going with Jones. Jalen Johnson up to make the tackle. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. They'll come out in a four-receiver look. Three men to the right side on second and six. Throwing now is Rodgers. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. Rodgers, that catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Here's J.K. Scott now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. That hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. Adams hauling it in from Rodgers. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Devontae Adams, 30 yards. And the Packers have taken the lead. And a nice job by him to catch the slant Mason and then Crosby navigate and break free. Point. And receivers love slant routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move, <laughs> when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best the asset, which is usually 14. their speed. And their speed Bears sometimes, seven. like this instance, can take them into the end zone. Mason. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. Taken in the end zone. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. start this drive in the air it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect Cordero Patterson the one he was hoping to get it to that'll bring up second down but you got to think that sooner or later they're going to hit one of those but the coverage has been excellent thus far and it was again on the last play an incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25 
Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big, but in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to it and forcing a third down. Out of the gun now on third down. Open man is Miller. He's got it. And he will have the Bears first down as he'll be marked out a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. Nine yards is the pickup there, and they'll have a second and one. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. He was tackled at the 40. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that'll get them the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Dean Lowry, what a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. Now that after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Another try after the first down sack. Foles, and he's going to go down again. Zadarius Smith, he's the one that drops him this go around, and that pass rush getting strong here, back-to-back -back sacks. That's the end of the one quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Not easy for Nick Foles and the Bears now. Third and long after the sack. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. 14 yards, but they're still well shy of a first as that leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. He's got the hook up to Lazard. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. On first down, it's Jones. 
And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. 15 yards on the play, first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Well, they'll try the jet sweep here with Lazard. Eddie Jackson with a tackle. The Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Shotgun now for Rodgers. He'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. They'll run on first down. Jones. A gain of three, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. This drive's taking more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Oh, they'll try the jet sweep here with Lazard. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. To Valdez Scantling over the middle. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 15 yards on the play, first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Now a first and 10 at the 11. On the delay, Jones. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They'll go again to Jones. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. Just inside the 20 at the 19. Khalil Mack able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the center. 
And the 13-year man puts it through. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. Turn. Here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. Foles and the Bears now with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Got a man, it's Patterson complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Gotta get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really onto something there in this passing game. It just can't get off the ground. And that play, it wound up losing yardage. Throwing again on second down. Foles. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. We just saw another example of really good defensive football, which has led to the cushion that they have in this game. Got to him once again, knocked him on the ground, forced an incompletion. And yeah, they've set the tone. It's one thing to set the tone, another to come in here on the road and set the tone. Now Foles. Now the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Dean Lowry, his second sack of the night. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Gonna let one fly for Robinson, and that is incomplete. The Bears tried it on fourth down, unable to convert. And the Packers are gonna get the football back in excellent field position. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Slant to Adams. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Give him nine there on the first down completion. At the 24-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. to throw on third and one. 
Able to find Lazard. Rogers pass. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll run it with Jones. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Second and 12, and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. Again, it's Jones. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. And he will not be able to get the first as he can get this only down to the five. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here for the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Crosby puts it through, and that will open the lead up now to 20 to 7. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. Foles ready to lead this offense. Down by 13, just over a minute, 40 to play. Their offense has struggled all night, and now they need to find two scores late to try to pull this thing out. Here's Foles. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. It's a Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down. A nice, safe throw and a good one. Seven yards there and a first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. 
And he takes it down deep into Green Bay territory. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Three yards the gain there, second down. Brings up second and goal at the four-yard line. Tonight. So it's all over. A Green Bay victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through and they closed them out with a big time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Chicago.